I love this every time I see it. Millions of bats sharing the same slice of sky. Each one's autonomous. Each one is interested only in its own welfare. Take 10 seconds and watch this video. Now imagine this going on for 15 minutes. This is what the biologists call an emergence. And this is one of the most incredible natural phenomenon that I've ever seen. This happens all over the world. And it's a beauty to behold because these bats are the fighter pilots of the sky. They are able to tuck up their wings and do incredible aerobatics. They can do somersaults, they can do rolls and loops, all in the pursuit of their prey and avoiding predators. I admire their agility. And what I especially admire is the way that the bats navigate inside these dense swarms. Put yourself in the bat's place for a moment. You are surrounded by other bats, so you can't see. Everybody's screaming in your ear, so you can't hear. You're running as fast as you can away from where you came. Now, how on earth can you ever do any kind of decent collision avoidance in these kind of scenarios? Imagine what that must be like to be in this dense sky. Now, we talk about millions of bats. What else do we get a million of? Well, how about the number of drones that are going to be sold between now and Christmas? No matter where you land philosophically on the issue, there's going to be a million drones between now and December 25th, and we need to address this issue. Now, when we think about drones, think about drones for photography, for art, for fun, for journalism. But I like to think about drones as something so much more. For me, a drone is a go-go gadget arm. <laughs> it's a way to reach out into the distance and manipulate things that you couldn't before. It's a way to get a vantage point that you didn't have before. And this is incredible. Drones enable transportation in a way we've never thought possible. Drones are going to do for transportation what the internet did for information. We're at the dawn of a new age. Only this time, instead of us moving along with our things, drones are going to let us move just the things themselves. Now, so where does this go? I think this is going to drone delivery. Now, every drone delivery starts somewhere, and my very first drone delivery is captured here for Luxembourgish television, delivering a pizza to Luxembourg's equivalent of Bill Nye the Science Guy, Mr. Science. <laughs> This was a lot of fun, not completely practical, but a really great start into it. What are drones going to do for our cities? Well, they're going to make them safer. They're going to make them have less traffic, less sprawl. And why is this happening? Because when your local mom and pop shop gets the same distribution efficiencies as Walmart, when it doesn't cost any more to deliver a gallon of orange juice to the shop at the edge of the street as it does to the giant box store at the very end of the... Uh, highway at the very end of this city. Imagine what your world could look like. So this is a powerful thought. Now, how does this all come together? How do we bring together drones, pizza, and rats? Oh, uh, sorry, I meant bats with a B. <laughs> one bat, one drone. We've got this. We know how to do this. Millions of bats. Several drones? We got a ways to go. What's wrong here? What are we missing? We're missing what I love to do. We're missing math. This is common sense to all of us. But when I want my robot, my flying robot, my drone, to understand common sense, I can't teach it. It's not a small child. I have to find the way to formulate, in mathematical terms, what that common sense means. So where do bats come into this? Well, bats aren't literally bird-brained, but they're pretty close. Their, their brains are tiny, and they're doing a hundred other things. They're doing circulation, they're doing respiration, they're doing muscular coordination, they are avoiding their predators, and they're tracking their prey. They're just not devoting gobs of computing power to resolving this relatively simple problem. So the question that we have is, what does this simple problem look like? So we have these drones flying around in these swarms, and we ask ourselves, let's start thinking about how we can break down the problem. 
So what I like to do is, is think about swarm behavior. Think about drone, bats, birds. This behavior in terms of external clutter and internal clutter. Now, these are new terms to most of you, but they're easy to understand. External clutter are things that don't act like you. So when you're a bat, a tree, a wall, a car, all these things don't act like you. Self-clutter are things that do act like you. And this is where things get really interesting, because when something acts like you, you make predictions about what it's going to do next. Now think about when you're in a car. You are now part of a swarm of other cars, you're moving along, and other car drivers are the self-clutter. And the car driver in front of you all of a sudden swerves. Now, the car driver doesn't swerve for any kind of altruistic reason. The car driver doesn't swerve to communicate with you. Swerves because wants to avoid, the driver wants to avoid, the pothole, the chicken crossing the road, the chest of drawers, I don't know why. But what's neat here is that the driver is communicating information to you. Through the deviation, through that change of behavior from the expected model, you learn something about your world. You don't see it, you don't smell it, you don't hear it. It's the mere fact that somebody did something different than you anticipated. So what we want to do is try and figure out, maybe we can learn the same lessons from bats. Maybe we can get simple rules that allow us to have drones fly in a similar manner. So for several years at Boston University, we led a multi-university, multi-million dollar effort to track bats and sort of extract this information. We went to Texas, we set up infrared cameras, recorded these bats, and we reconstructed their flight patterns. Now, what did we learn from that? We learned some ideas. This is, this is one of them. This is a potential explanation of what the bats are seeing. This is a heat map. The redder, hotter areas are where you'll see more bats, and the cooler, bluer areas are where you'll see less bats. And what you're doing is you're not looking down on the bat. You're looking through one bat's eyes at the other bats that might be around it. So this is almost like you're playing a first-person view game. So right in front of you, you'll notice that the, there's a big, dark blue area. Bats don't like to be nose to tail. And you'll notice on the wingtips, right and left, bats don't like to go in a line. But what you do get is bats like to position themselves so the other bats in front of them are kind of above or kind of below. Now, how do we make sense of this as humans? We're not really created to think in 3D. And for those of you who remember your Star Trek lore, the original Star Trek II had Captain Kirk and Spock beating Khan because they said Khan doesn't think in 2D. Or sorry, Khan only thinks in 2D. We can think in 3D. So I can only give you a 2D example that's going to resonate with you because we're still stuck in that 21st mentality thinking. Imagine you're running a marathon. We've all seen this. Thousands of marathon runners trying to run through the same narrow gate. This is a good analogy with the millions of bats flying out of the same narrow cave entrance. How do the runners organize themselves? They're not thinking in altruistic terms. They're not, they don't have signals or signposts or anything. They're just, each one is doing their own thing. Each one is trying their best to run their fastest race. And yet, miraculously, they still organize into these same kind of patterns where you don't have runners coming across the line abreast, and you don't have runners coming across the line in single file. They find their spaces. They move around organically, fluidly, dynamically. It never stops. But they're always finding these comfort zones where there's nobody directly in front or behind, and there's nobody directly to either side. So we took some of these ideas, and this is me flying the, believe it or not, the bat copter <laughs> in Texas. We're Participating in a, an emergence of bats, so there are millions of bats coming out of this cave again across the 15 minutes, and we're flying inside, and, and we're just trying to understand, can we integrate, can we see how the bats behave as this drone flies near them? I really believe that this is the way we want to go with drones. I really believe that bringing delivery to our cities will have this incredible far-reaching effect. And so as I end this talk, I want you to look at the slide and I want you to think that here there are a few bats and they're handling it on own. They're doing this, they're making it work. This is where I want to be with drones. Thank you. <laughs>